Back in episode 6 of Feedback TV, we reported on MLA's support for the introduction of industry standards and guidelines for the intensive finishing of prime lambs. That was two and a half years ago now. And since then, those procedures and guidelines have been developed, put in place and applied in lamb feedlots around the country. We thought we'd see how things have been going. When Feedback TV reported on the plan to produce guidelines for the intensive finishing of sheep and lambs in the winter of 2009, the outlook was very optimistic. Now, in late 2011, with the national procedures and guidelines in place, development team member Hamish Dixon believes they got it right. Yeah, I think the work that we've done with MLA over the past three years to, to get the document to where it is now has certainly got, got us right. The procedures and guidelines are a set of tools for producers to plan and manage their feedlot or intensive feeding system and were developed with close industry consultation. We ran forums across Australia that we opened it up. We opened up the invites to local councils, producers, processors, advisors, local resellers, as widely as we possibly could to make sure we had lots of feedback on the, on the early drafts. They're not intended to be an industry code and their application is voluntary. They've been developed for people similar to the McGormans, who run a lamb feedlot east of Adelaide at Sanderston. After establishing the feedlot, John McGorman stepped back to let his sons manage and expand the business. A challenging time for Alex and Paul, because at first there were no procedures or guidelines for them to reference. We've been running our operation for over 10 years now, and a lot of it was trial and error. There wasn't that much available. The boys first scaled up the business in 2006, and then again in 2010 and the approval process couldn't have been more different. First time around, we, um, we first applied for a council approval. Um, we had to, the council had nothing to go on and they used the ca um, cattle industry as a bit of a guideline there, and that was a very slow process. This last time we went for approval, it's a lot more streamlined because they just used these new um, guidelines there and it was able to go through council very quickly. The Procedures and Guidelines document is essentially eight checklists. From having a checklist to make sure the due diligence is done even before construction begins, through to a final checklist pre-sale so that you make sure the animals have their ear tags, vendor declarations have been signed and that all the loading and welfare guidelines are followed. It's comprehensive, it's detailed and it requires commitment. Is it too much? No, I don't think it's asking too much um, with all the, ch the chapters that are in those checklists. Not all of them apart from the daily checks, checks have to be done each time. A lot of them can be spread out and um, some of them are only done annually so I don't think it's too much of, a, of an ask for that. While their feedlot was up and running successfully before the guidelines were published, the McGormans say the checklists have helped keep the business focused on responsible management. Important when they're grain finishing 16,000 prime lambs a year. Yeah, useful tool to check daily, daily things, um, things like trough space, feed, water space, feed space, yard size that we were doing everything right and we are all within the guidelines and it's just a good reference. For the McGormans, there's been another advantage to making use of the guidelines. Their lambs are Rosmed accredited and that leads to premium priced markets. It was helpful putting the quality assurance manual together that we need for Rosmed. It made it a lot easier and then we've been able to access that market, uh, Rosmed market now that all that is in place. By being able to benchmark their feedlot operation, the McGormans' confidence to diversify their Thornby Fine Meats business has been galvanised. They now have a website and online sales of fresh lamb have taken off. While their latest venture into retail is a butcher shop in the Barossa Valley township of Tanunda. Having run the feedlot with and without the benefits of the guidelines, Paul McGorman is in a good position to evaluate the recommendations. What we're finding is that the guidelines are actually, um, they're realistic. They don't seem to be written by someone sitting in an office who doesn't have any idea. So they do seem practical um, there and certainly working through them. We haven't found anything glaring obviously that um, we're thinking, well, that's just not right. So we do find it's actually quite useful that way. For any sheep and lamb producer with an existing intensive finishing system, there are economic gains to be made by adopting the procedures and guidelines, according to Hamish Dixon. Using this document can really help reduce things like mortality rate, uh, incidence of shy feeders. It's really about making sure that your system's running as best as it possibly can, and that's going to result in, in economic gains from there. Because what you often find with, uh, with intensive feeding systems is that they're actually quite run, they're run on quite tight margins, so small improvements can make big benefits at the end of the day.